trying to get the people acquainted with what we're trying to do. Now, what we're trying to do, remember, is to see Jesus Christ so present that every believer's heart will be stimulated. His faith that he'll reach up and get a hold of God and for what he has need of. For all that we have need of in this life's journey is in Christ. Just like your trees, I hear. All that tree has need of, it's an apple tree. Did you ever think of that? When it's not one inch high, every apple that'll ever be in the tree is in it right there. Ten hundred bushels, if there's that many. Say five hundred bushels of apples come off of a tree. All five hundred bushels of apples is in it when it's planted. <laughs> if it isn't, where do they come from? Amen. See, you just plant it, and then it has to, has to draw in water. Draw it in from the earth. And it has to draw till it gets some more than its potion. Then it pushes out limbs, pushes out leaves, pushes out blossoms, pushes out apples. See? Pushes them out. Don't bring them in. It pushes them out. So that, I think Christ is the inexhaustible fountain of life. And when we're planted in Him, all we do is drink from that fountain of life and push out everything that we have need of in this journey. All the things that we have need of is in Him. And we're planted in Him and draw from Him. And He's the inexhaustible fountain of life. Let us stand to our feet now, if you will, just a moment in reverence as we read God's Word. Or a little text tonight, being close to the Lenten season or the Good Friday, I want to read a portion of the St. John's Gospel, beginning at the 12th verse and the 12th chapter. On the next day, much people were come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him, cried, Hosanna, blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, sat thereon, and as it was written, Fear not, daughters of Zion, behold, thy king cometh to thee, uh, sitting on, a, on an ass's colt. These things understood not his disciples at first, but when Jesus was glorified, they remembered it. These things were written of him, and that they had done these things unto him. And the people, therefore, that was with him, when he had called Lazarus from the dead, bear record. For this cause the people also met him, for they heard that he had done this miracle. The Pharisees, therefore, said among themselves, Perceive ye how ye prevail nothing? Behold, the world's gone after him. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was a Bethsaida, Galilee, desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. And Philip cometh and telleth Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. Hebrews thirteen eight. Says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let us bow our heads while we pray. Now, in this solemn moment, with our heads bowed after reading this word, is there any in here would like to be remembered in this prayer and want God to do something for you during the time of this meeting or even this very evening? Would you just let it be known as you raise your hand? He'll know what's beneath your hand. Our Heavenly Father, we are now approaching Thy Word. We approach with reverence and with prayer, with bowed heads and bowed hearts. For we know that Thou art always true to this Word. We pray now that, that You'll set us aside from the things and cares of life in this world, that we might serve Thee with pure and clean hearts washed in the blood of the Lamb. We ask you, Lord, is this the hour that there could break out a great revival here in this part of the country? If it is, Lord, we are here to serve you in any way that we can, and we just commit ourselves to you for that service, and may something take place, Lord, that will stir the hearts of the people. And there may be that the meeting is just set for a few that's scattered out around here yet, that maybe it may be the last member of the body of Christ will be added right here in Louisiana, and then the 
the doors will be closed. We don't know just what, Lord. We're just moving cautiously, watching every move. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll heal all the sick and afflicted. There's a little lane here, a poor little afflicted child and people laying around sick and needy. God, may they look away from their afflictions tonight and through this coming week. And may there not be a feeble person among us at the closing of this meeting. Bless the ministers, Lord. Their fine cooperation, the things that they're doing to get together. May the people realize that this is their, their heart of their, their pastor to try to bring in everything and every gift and everything they can that's honored by God that it might help their congregation to see and to believe and grow. Grant it, Father. Forgive us of our trespasses. Grant every request beneath those hands tonight. Lord, mine up. Thou knowest my heart. It's, it's prayer for the people. May Jesus be known among us, Father. Give us a great outpouring of his blessings. And when we leave here tonight, may we be able to say like those who came from Emmaus that day at the resurrection, as we're entering these uh, holy seasons. Did not our hearts burn within us, they said, as he talked to us along the way? For we asked it in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> not to, to preach or to take much of the time, but just to set in order just a little few thoughts here now before we call the prayer line. About 25 minutes, I suppose, I'll call the, the prayer line to pray for the sick. And now... Each night, Mr. Borders and them will be trying to explain to you how and how to hold a healing and so forth. And remember, we're not here trying just to represent divine healing. We're here to represent Jesus Christ. And in Him is healing and every attribute of God is in Him. And we is purchased our salvation, our healing, and all we have. And healing is a minor, and you can never major on a minor. We know that. So we are, but we're trying, Jesus used about 86% of his ministry was up on divine healing, that he might attract the attention of the people, then explain what his purpose was there. And that's the same thing. We're trying to continue his ministry in the best way that we know how, believing that he still remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now, we know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Therefore, God and His Word is the self-same thing. It's God in print form. You're no more than your Word. God's no more than His Word. So this great feast that we're approaching here now in this season, this Lenten, as they call it, and approaching Good Friday and, and then Easter Sunday, a week to Easter Sunday, I believe. So we're approaching this. I thought I'd read this scripture. That uh, these hungry hearted Greeks uh, come up to worship at the feast of the Passover, and they little know that that was the Passover lamb Christ was to be, but their hearts were hungry. They wanted to see him. They'd heard so much about him. And know that great things they'd heard that he did. And so, no doubt, coming to that feast, they must have read much in the scripture of what he was and his, his nature and what he would do when he come. So they wanted to see him. They come to his disciples and they were given the privilege to see him by the, the goodwill and the ministry of his disciples. They were brought into his presence by his servants. And now, if Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And I'm sure that here at, 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 at Baton Rouge that we're just as hungry to see Jesus as they were to see him then. Uh, every man it's in his right mind and hears about the Lord Jesus, he longs to see him. Oh, and I first heard of him when I was a boy. I, I just couldn't hardly stand it. I thought, if he's God, he, he always was God. He, he always will be God. So trying to put it off in some great uh, time in the past or, or some great time that's coming on, that's just the nature of man. Man is always praising God for what he did, looking forward for what he's going to do and ignoring what he's doing. That's just the nature of man. 
It's always been that way, and it still remains that way tonight. But now these Greeks wanted to see him, and we want to see him. Well, now if he is risen from the dead, and not he's not dead, he's alive. And if he is alive, as the Scripture claims he is, then why can't we see him? We have a right to ask to. Remember he said, A little while yet, and the world seeth me no more. Yet ye shall see me, for I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. The world won't see me, but ye shall see me. And now, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then why could we not see him? Now, if I would um, uh, go to different ideas that we've had... And remember that God never does anything outside of what He's promised to do. See? He always makes a promise, then He comes to fulfill it. God at the beginning, knowing the end from the beginning, because He was infinite, we all know that. He's omnipresent, omnipotent, and infinite. Now, if He's infinite, then He knows all things. And now, and the uh, omnipotent So, notice, then... He lotted his scriptures down to the ages to come. And then when this age rolls around, while we always try to, to have things figured out the way we think it's right, but usually if God's made a promise for that age, his custom way of doing anything and never changes doing it. Remember, God never changes. He never changes his ways. Because that's the reason we can definitely place our faith in what God said to be the truth, the Bible. Now, you've got to place God somewhere. Now, if God was going to judge the world, and He is, if we'd say, if I might say to the French Catholic, what do you think He'll judge it by? The French Catholic Church. The Roman Catholic, but He's going to judge it by that church. The Orthodox, Greek Orthodox Catholic, believe it a judge by that. The Methodists that say our church, the Baptists, our church, the Pentecostal. See, it'd be so confusing, the person wouldn't know what to do. Amen. But he said he would judge the world by Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jesus Christ is the Word. Amen. So he'll judge the world by the Word. Amen. Now, the Bible is the entire revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. This is the revelation. Nothing's to be added to it or taken from it. The same will be taken our part from the book of life if we add or take from it. That is the Word of God, and we believe it. Now, each generation, when the church usually gets it so mixed up and everything, to, when the time comes for the Word to be fulfilled, they're looking back to some other generation, way back. What happened way back some other day, and they miss seeing what's happened in that day. Amen. Now, to you Catholic people, how you miss those saints. How about Joan of Arc? Uh, a French, I uh, might uh, just raise that because of French territory. You remember the priest burnt her to a stake as a witch. She was a witch because the, the girl was spiritual. She saw visions and so forth. And you burn her for a witch. Then after a while, when you've seen your mistake, you dug up the bodies of those priests and throw them in the river for penance. But you see, it already passed. And that's the way it always is. It passes us and we don't see it. Amen. Even to the disciples, Jesus said, one time talking to him, they said, why did the, the scribes say that Elias must first come? He said, he's already come and you didn't know him. Yes. And they understood it with John the Baptist, even those disciples, that voice in the wilderness and Malachi 3 being fulfilled, why it passed right by him and they never even understood it at all. See? And it's possible that we can let it pass right over us and yes. fail to see it. God's way is always now, if it would come in a whole system or some certain organization like Protestant, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostals, or some of their denominations would produce it, they would believe it. Well, then the others would have nothing to do with it. So God never does deal in times like this with any organization. He never did. He always deals with an individual, one person, you. Amen. Just that one person. It's you between you and God. Not between your organization and God, between you as an individual. God always does it that way. He always has. And now the Bible said He does nothing unless He reveals it to His prophets, His servants, the prophets. And always, like in Elijah's time and Moses' time and all those different times, He would reveal it. Now, it had been written in the Scripture that a 
God was going to give them a super sign, a great sign, an everlasting sign. A virgin was going to conceive. And then there's going to be one born, a child. We know him as to be the Messiah. All the scriptures, all the way from Genesis up, had linked up to the coming of the Messiah. The prophets were part of the word. Jesus said they were called gods, and they were, as long as the word of God was brought to them. He said, how can you condemn me when I say I'm a son of God? And, and you, those, it's written in your law. Those who the word of the Lord come to you, you call them gods. See, the, it wasn't the prophets. It was the word of God. And it's the same thing now. And it was Jesus, same thing, the word of God made manifest. And that's always the light of the hour. Now, if we looked around tonight and we go back to some of these great churches all the way down through the age and say, this is it, this is it. If you don't watch, we'll be walking in a glare instead of a light. We're looking at something that passed years past. Looking back, any man who drives the road looking through the rear view mirror will wreck up. Yeah. Right. That's right. You take like some of our sisters trying to... Uh, 50 years old trying to look 16. <laughs> See, you're looking back. Look forward. Look where you're going to. Look where you're going, not what you come from. Paul said, forgetting those things that are in the past, I press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ. You must always look where you're going, not where you've been. If you watch the rear view mirror, you will soon wreck up. That's been the trouble. That's the reason that Luther wrecked up when Wesley's light come on. That's the reason that Wesley wrecked up when the Pentecostals come on. And if we don't watch, the Pentecostals go to wreck up too. If you just don't keep on your toes to watch, you see you're always looking back, referring to what somebody else did back there when we're, when we're commanded to look forward, keep going on. Their, their prophecy happened in their days. This happens in this day. It next happens in the next day. It's lotted out to the end time. And there's things that's supposed to be going on now, according to the Scripture. The Holy Spirit on earth poured out upon the people. Now, when Jesus come, those scribes and so forth ought to have recognized him, but they didn't because they were so set in their traditions, Pharisees, Sadducees, Herodians, whatever more, they was in that tradition so steeped until the very prophecy of Christ himself and what he was supposed to be, they failed to see it. He said to him, said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they that testify of me. They said, we're Moses' disciples. He said, if you were Moses' disciples, you'd know me. Yes. For Moses wrote of me. Yes. The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. Yes. They claimed to be, but they wasn't because that they were so steeped in tradition. Now, that's how they missed seeing him and that day that they live in. Now, that could repeat, you know. Yes. It ha always has. And it could repeat again. Now, let's just go back for a few minutes. And the only way that we could find out what he is. Now today, if we take the ordinary person, what Christ ought to be, we, some of them picture him as a historical great something. Some bring him down to just an ordinary man, and some brings him to a philosopher, a prophet, or, or something another like that, a good man, a teacher. But he, whatever he was, he still is, according to the Scripture, see? Now, if we went down to town to find him, and we'll go looking around to see if now, remember his promises that he'd be with us. Now, if we went to find a certain man, and a, we'd say, I'd say maybe he'd be six foot tall. And you'd say, no, I'd be seven and a half. And they'd say, no, he's only four foot. He is a little fellow. See, we'd be all mixed up. Well, they'd say maybe to have nail scars in his hand. Just any hypocrite could have nail scars in their hand and thorn prints. And after all, Jesus is sitting at the right hand of the majesty on high. But how would we ever know who he was? They didn't know him then because of his dress. Because he walked right among men even after his resurrection. And them he had walked with and they still didn't know him. Yeah. See? It wasn't his dress. He just dressed like anybody else. It wasn't his dress. It wasn't his manner. It wasn't his organization. It wasn't his fellowship card that he packed because he had none. Right. Frankly, he disagreed with it. So uh, it wasn't that. They said, we don't know from whence he come. And the blind man said, that's a strange thing. You're a leader of today and... He's opened my eyes, and yet you don't even know where he come from. He had some good theology of his own, see. He said, you don't know what this man's done, the things he's done, and yet you're supposed to be the leaders of the day. Now, but the sad part with them, their eyes were blinded. It's supposed to be that way. Did you know the church is supposed to be in the last day, too? 
Heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness and denying the power thereof. That's the same prophecy, the same thing. It certainly is. And lady, I'll see a church age. Jesus is on the outside of the church trying to get back in, knocking at the door. The only age he's ever put out of the church is in the Lady of Sea age that we're now living. So we see we're right back again where we started. Now, the only true way to find out what he was or what he is is to find out what he was. Now, of course, he'd be the same. Now, let's just go back and pull up a few things that he did. We all know his virgin birth, and we'll not start with that. But I read out of St. John. Let's go back to St. John, the first chapter, and just find out what he was. And then we can understand what he, what he is now. Whatever he was then, he's the same thing now. All right? Now, we find out here in the beginning, he was the Word. In the beginning was the Word. Then he's still the Word. Yeah. Uh-huh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word is with God, and the Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. All right? Then that's what he was then. He was the vindicated promise of God for that age that made him the Word. Is that right? right. Well, you'd be the same thing today. Right. The Word again. See? And he, 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 he told him to look at that. That's what he was. He was the Word. The Word was made flesh. That's what he was. Now, when he became the Word and God came down in the form of the Holy Spirit, uh, of, in the form of a dove, and went upon him and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I'm pleased to dwell in. Then we find out his ministry started out prayers for the sick, healing. Everybody liked him. He's fine. No one is a fine fella. And then... One in his first ministry, what identified him, remember the Jews always believed in divine healing. They had a pool at the gate here of Bethesda, uh, Bethesda, the gate, a uh, beautiful gate. The people laid there, multitudes of, uh, of impotent people that were lame, halt, blind, and went into the waters for healing. God's always made a way for healing. So his healing wasn't exactly what attracted their attention to him. There was something more that attracted his attention. Now, we find out that if what he was supposed to be, Moses had said what he would be, and all the prophets had spoke of him, now he's got to be identified by that. Now, here's what he is, the Word. Now, Hebrews, the fourth chapter, says that the Word of God is more powerful than a two-edged sword. It is, cuts to the mire of the bone and is a discerner of the thoughts in the heart. That's what the Word is. Now, see, when the Word come to the prophets, they were identified by their prophecy. God said, if there be one among you who is spiritual or a prophet, I, the Lord, will speak to him in visions and, sh- and show him dreams and so forth. In other words, interpret dreams like Joseph and them did. And that will be his credentials. And then that was the credentials that he had the inspired Word by revelation. See, the Word that was to be fulfilled... His prophecy identified him as a prophet, and the word comes to the prophet. Amen. So when Jesus came on the scene, the Bible said he was to be a prophet. Moses said, The Lord your God shall raise up a prophet like unto me. And Israel always believed their prophets because that was God identifying himself in human beings. Always. Any Bible scholar knows that. That's why he identified himself as in his prophets. They were just ordinary men. Of course, they were born for that purpose. As we know, there's local gifts of nine gifts in the church, but there is offices of the church, and that uh, God, that's uh, predestinated or foreordained. God has set in the church uh, apostles and prophets and teachers and pastors, evangelists and so forth. That's God's gifts set into the church, and these nine spiritual gifts that operate in the local body and uh, of believers, and they must be checked by two or three judges before they're be given to the church, because sometimes they could be wrong. But notice, these prophets, as they were born, like in, I believe in Jeremiah here, God said, before you even conceived in your mother's womb, I ordained you a prophet over the nations. You see? Moses is born a prophet. And John the Baptist, uh, 712 years before he's born, he was the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Isaiah the prophet speaking of him. See, it's not these gifts are born gifts, God placing them in the church. And now, in the doing a first advent of our Lord, there had not been a prophet on earth for 400 years. Malachi was the last prophet. And he spoke of the coming of John in the third chapter of Matthew, which would be Isaiah, the prophet, spoke of him. And then also then Malachi spoke. 
And it said Elijah would appear on the scene, of one forerunning Christ. I sent my messenger before my face to prepare the way, as he said in Matthew 11, identifying John. And the strange thing now, when Jesus began to speak and had been identifying himself, let's watch how he did that now. If he isn't scriptural in what he did, then he wasn't Messiah. He has to come according to the scripture. Amen. Now, there had been a man by the name of Andrew had been attending John's revival and John said he was coming. He's, John was so sure of his coming, he said, he's standing right among you now. Because he knew that he was to announce that Messiah. Amen. Now, he never went off to a seminary to learn what the Messiah would be. He went into the wilderness and was out there by himself Amen. and come forth. Because he was, had to not be man-trained, he had to be trained by God because now his father was a priest. And it was customary that the son followed the, the father's uh, business and his schooling and so forth. But John's business was too great, too important. Well, a lot of them people, he said, now, you know, brother, so and he's over here. He meets the uh, qualifications. But John went out in the wilderness until he was with God, till he was definitely knew what the sign of the Messiah would be. When he come, he said, I... Knew him not, but he that said upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining, he's the one who's going to baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire. And he knew and was definitely sure that that was him. Now, uh, uh, Andrew had been trying to get his brother, to, uh, Simon. They were fishermen. And they were trying to get his brother to come to the meeting. Now, I read a story some time ago about their life. They were great believers in the order of the Pharisees. And he had a, 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 his father, father's name, Jonas, and he was a, a, he was a great fisherman too. And many times they had to trust God for what they got to eat, their fish, to pay off the debts and, and get food. And I was reading one day where the old father took Simon and set him down, and him and Andrew, and he said, Boys, I always believed that I'd live to see the coming Messiah, that we've looked forward for all these years. And now, sons, before the Messiah comes, perhaps I'll, I'll be gone because I'm old. But I, I don't want you boys to be deceived. Now, there will be all kinds of things raised up before he comes. It always has to be that way, you know, to kind of knock off the, uh, the real thing when he gets there. You see, Satan's always out there. Just like before Jesus came, they said, this other Jesus is raised up and took groups out into the wilderness and perished and so forth. But he said, sons, remember, this Messiah, will be scripturally identified. Oh, how he ought to teach people today. See? The Messiah will be identified by the scripture because Moses said, The Lord our God shall raise up a prophet like unto him. And Moses is our leader. And we're looking. Now, it's been hundreds of years. We've had no prophet. But Moses said that one was coming. And no doubt at this uh, length here without a prophet has been to identi identify that when... It does come. He will meet the qualifications of that prophet. We all know that scripture. Now we find that later that Jesus had never showed any sign yet. One day, Simon came up into his presence, just a little skeptic perhaps of Andrew's testimony because he'd heard all this about this wild man drowning people down the river and, uh, with baptisms and so forth. And he couldn't go for that because all kinds of stuff passed through Palestine at that time. But one day, Simon came into the presence of the Lord Jesus. Now, let's watch what he was yesterday. To that elected seed, that Simon that was ordained to this place, that seed that, like in the beginning, God was not even God. He was a great eternal. And in there was attributes. Attributes was his thoughts. And then he become a word like this, and a word expressed well, a thought expressed is a word. A word expresses a thought. And then remember, if you ever was in God's thinking, you'll always be there. If you've got eternal life, you are the expression or the attribute of His thought for this age. If not, you, there's only one eternal life. It had always existed. And you in his mind existed before there was a world. That's reason he said he chose you before the foundation of the world. It isn't what we think, what somebody else thinks. It's what God, eternal, you always was. In his thinking. 
It was in him to be man. That's the reason Christ was the express image. See? Now he was to be father. He was to be son. He was to be savior. He was to be healer. There was nothing. It wasn't even an angel or nothing. Then he created angels. Then he became God. He was worshipped. Then these are the manifestations of his thinking. There's nothing wrong. Everything's going to turn out all right. Don't be scared. God's big time piece is ticking right along. It'll be there. It'll have a church without spot or ankle. It was in his thinking. The thing of it is, am I in there? Are you in there? And here he was, the eternal thought of God expressed into sonship. Oh, my. That was God Emmanuel then. Notice then, he was the Word. Now, here, am I deaf in you? I don't mean to scream at you. Sometimes we speak in big outdoors and places, and I don't mean to get too loud. Now, let the, everybody's controlling me, kind of cut it for me, if you will, if it gets too loud. Now, notice, in this, when Jesus came, here comes Simon up, walking up before him, and as soon as Jesus laid his eyes up on him, he said, your name is Simon, and you are the son of Jonas. Oh, did that, Set that fisherman's heart on fire. He couldn't even write his own name. He had no education. But he knowed that was the word because it deserved the thoughts that was in his heart. There was Messiah. Though the Bible said he was both ignorant and unlearned, but he became become the head of the church of Jerusalem. He fell down at his feet. He knew that that was. Not only did he know who he was, he knew that godly old father of his that has gone on. See? That showed that he was the Word. The Word discerns the thoughts that's in their hearts. That's exactly what Jesus looked up on them and perceived their thoughts. See, And that the Bible said that the Word of God is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. That made him the Word then. That master prophet, that God prophet. More than a prophet, he all the prophets was plus the rest of God. He, he was Emmanuel, God representing fullness in the Son, Christ Jesus. Now we find God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Now, if we notice, then Peter was convinced that that godly old father of his had taught him. And here was a scriptural evidence that that was the Messiah. That was him yesterday. It's him today. How would he identify himself anymore? Now, he didn't identify himself as some great doctor, Ph.D., L.L. See? He didn't identify himself as some priest. The Word of God identified him. Amen. The Word speaking to him identified him. Amen. That's how they know what, who he was. Now there was one standing there by the name of Philip. And Philip had been having Bible studies, Scripture on the scrolls, with a fellow named Nathaniel. And when he seen this happen... It just so lit his heart up that he couldn't stand it no more. He knew the thing was there. He's just an ordinary man. But they knew that that was Messiah. So he ran around the hill. It's about 15 miles. If you'd measure where he was preaching, must have went one day and come back the next. And he went to find this fellow who had been having study with him in Scripture. Very staunch, honest man. You have him around here. Man who puts her whole life in studying the Word. So he had studied the Word. And Philip went to find him and perhaps knocked on the door. And, and, and Nathaniel's wife said, well, he just strolled out through the olive orchard there. He raised his olives. So uh, he went run back to see him. And he found him on his knees under one of the trees praying. A uh, Christian gentleman always gives, uh, shows courtesy. So he, he waited until he got through praying. He said, come see who we have found. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And then this staunch fine Hebrew named Nathaniel said, Now, wait a minute, Philip. <laughs> Have you gone off on the deep side? Now, could there... What did you say, you say this man's name was? Jesus of Nazareth. He said, Now, could there be any good thing come out of Nazareth? And I think Philip gave him the best answer that any man could give another. He said, Come and see. Don't stay home and criticize. Come find out. Search the Scripture." Come and see. Well, uh, perhaps along the road he began to tell him, said, Now, you know, we know, we know from the Scripture that this Messiah is going to be a prophet because Moses said he was. And this man, you remember the old fisherman that couldn't sign his name to the receipt 
When he bought the fish, yes. Well, he told him who he was. I oh, imagine Philip saying, now, wait a minute, uh, Nathaniel, I, I got to see that first. When he finally got to where he was, he came up with Philip. Philip brought him up just like somebody brought you. Come up into his presence to the meeting where Jesus is preaching. And he looked up on him. He's just an ordinary man dressed like any other man. He didn't look any different. And he pulled no punches. He always just plain man. And he talked sometime in riddles to them if they couldn't understand it. Even his disciples. That didn't disturb their faith. See? They believed him. Amen. Notice. One time, a great multitude had gathered around him, thousands. He's a great fellow. All this prophet of Galilee, great fellow. He went to every church. Everybody wanted him. But one day, he began to preach doctrine to him, And then that changed the thing a little bit, you see. He wasn't so popular from then on, see. But the sign was accompanying the voice. Now, we find out that when Philip come up to where he was, and him and Nathaniel... Jesus turned and looked up on Nathanael and said, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Now you say maybe the way he dressed. They all dressed alike. See? And uh, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Now that almost shocked him so bad he didn't know what to do. He said, Rabbi, uh, when did you ever know me? Why, you've never seen me. This is our first time we've ever met. And they tell me, you've been living down there at Bethany, and, and uh, how, how'd you ever know me? Well, he thought when the Messiah come, and, and God would take some kind of a lever and pull it, and the quarters of heaven would drop down on, the, on their big denominational steps out there and say, Caiaphasus, I'm sending down my Messiah to you now. He said, I've arrived. And the angels would come and say, this is him. See, that's the reason he does it, and then he goes right over them people's head that's sleeping. They never know what's taking place. Amen. Notice, there he was. He was standing there. He said, when did you know me, Rabbi? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the tree, I saw you. Oh, what I? He sees you now. He knows you now. He's just the same yesterday, today, and forever. What eyes? Fifteen miles, the day before, around the mountains, I saw you when you were under the tree. What did he do? He ran up and fell down and said, Thou art Rabbi, thou art the King of Israel, thou art the Son of God. Amen. He believed it. Why? He was thoroughly identified that he was the Word because he could discern the thoughts that was in the heart. And there he was standing there. Now, there was those standing by who didn't believe that. No, many of them didn't believe it. There's some of the priests and things standing by. They said, this man is Beelzebub. The, 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 the thing was done. The scripture was identified. And then the, the, the clergy of that day had to give an answer to their congregation. And they couldn't answer it no, no other way but just either say he is or he isn't. So they said, this man does this through Beelzebub. In other words, he's a fortune teller, an evil spirit. Anybody knows that a fortune teller is the devil. So he said, this man does this evil through uh, uh, Beelzebub and Jesus said now I'll forgive you for that the sacrifice had never been made the atonement wasn't made yet but he said when the Holy Ghost has come to do it one word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come Amen. so we see where it throws us today now this is quite a thing and uh, but Philip and Nathaniel believed with all their heart now that was the way Jesus identified himself yesterday as being Messiah now, we all know, just a few minutes now, we all know that there's only three races of people in the world. And that's Noah's sons, Ham, Sham, and Japheth. See? And that's Jew, Gentile, and Samaritan. Now, we as Gentiles, we were heathens, Romans and whatever more in them days, the Anglo-Saxon. And we worshipped idols. But the Jews was looking for a Messiah. And the Samaritans was looking for a, a, a Messiah. Now, Jesus said when he was on his road down to Jericho, right down below the hill from Jerusalem, I have need to go by Samaria. So he went up there at Samaria and sat down at the gate at the well. He's, it's still just as like it was then. They haven't changed a bit. There's the old panoramic like this here and the vines growing rock wall. And, and he just sat down and sent his disciples into this little city called Sychar to get some victuals, food. While they were gone, a woman of ill fame 
Maybe, the, as I said, the young lady might have been turned on the street from not a juvenile delinquent, maybe a parent delinquent. They let her out on the street. Maybe a fine-looking young woman, and she did evil, and she come up there to get her water because she couldn't come with the virgins, the w- nice, honorable women. They couldn't do it. They get theirs first, and then the rest of them, prostitutes and things, come on up in the day. Virgins get their... Well, I watched them put that big five-gallon kittle on top of their head, that big crock, and one on each shoulder, and walk along talking as women can, and never spill a drop of it. I don't know how they do it, but they sure do it. But they uh, through there, and then she come to get her water for the day. The rest of them is gone. Must have been around noon, and she took the handles and put it in the, the for the window to let it down to get the. It's just like a kind of like a crock, and it's and it's got a, a handle around it. They put those hooks around those handles. And it being heavy, when it gets down, it turns over. Then they windle the water up. It's like sometimes we've done it here in these countries and so forth, but they have like a trough we let down. Now we, we find she started to let this pitcher down into the well, and she heard a, somebody said, Woman, bring me a drink. And she looked around. She saw a middle-aged man sitting there. He, he must have looked a little older than what he was because in St. John 6 here we find out that that at the feast, they were saying, he said what he, what he was. And they said, well, you say you've seen Abraham and you're a man not over 50 years old. See, not, oh, see he must have looked 50 when he's only 30. Said, you, you're not over 50 years old and say you've seen Abraham. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. So then um, we find out that he must have looked a little age just sitting over against the side of the wall. We don't know just what he looked like. I wouldn't know. Uh, psychiatrist or psychology takes us a picture, but Hoffman and one and Selman and whoever more. But that's just what they think about it. See, we don't know just what he looked like. And there he was sitting there. And then he said this. And now he turned the woman to him quickly and let him know this is a segregation. He said, now, just a minute. He said, now, you are a Jew and I'm a, a woman of Samaria and we have no dealings with each other. And said, um, he said, but if you knew who you were talking to, You'd ask me for a drink. I bring, give you water. You don't come to draw. And the conversation, what was he doing? He's trying to contact her spirit now, see, to see what was in her. Now, the father had sent him up there, just the same as I believe the father sent me here. But what? I don't know. But there he was, and he was talking to her. And she said, uh, oh, you say worship at Jerusalem. Our fathers worship in this mountain and about the well and so forth. He said, the time's coming. Now is and God seeks those who worship in spirit and truth. The conversation went on until they found what her trouble was. How many in my congregation tonight knows what her trouble was? Sure, she had too many husbands. So he, he, said, uh, he said, go get your husband and come here. And she said, I don't have any husband. He said, you said the truth. You've had five. And the one you're living with is not yours. Now watch. Look at those trained priests. Failing to see that word manifested. When he did that before those priests, they said he's Beelzebub. Look at this woman in her state, what the condition she was in. A woman of ill fame, had six husbands. And here she was out there at the well. And that woman in that estate looked quickly. She said, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. We haven't had a prophet for hundreds of years. I perceive that you are a prophet. We're looking for a Messiah. And when this Messiah comes, this is his mark. He's going to do this when he comes. Amen. Amen. Oh, my. There you are. That woman in her condition knowed more about the Word of God than half the preachers in the country. That's right. right. She said, I know when Messiah cometh, it's called Christ. When he comes, that's what he's going to do. If that was him yesterday, that's him today. That's how he identified himself both to the Jew and to the Samaritan. See? Notice, that was him yesterday. She said, I know when Messiah cometh, he'll tell us these things. But who are you? He said, I'm he that speaks to you. Into the city she went, leaving that water pot, and said, come see a man who told me the things I've done. Isn't that the very Messiah? That was his identification to his Jews and to the Samaritan. But not to the Gentile, not one time. To a Gentile. But in Luke, the 17th chapter, he said, In the last days, as it was in the days of Sodom, when the Son of Man will be in being revealed, as it was like it was in the days of Sodom, 
Now, in the days of Sodom, uh, and we're closing, notice, there was always watches, always three classes of people everywhere. One of them is believer, make-believer, and unbeliever. They're everywhere. Amen. What's, what's Jesus identifying Lot's time with his coming? Now watch, as it was in the days of Lot. Now what kind, now, he referred then, he was reading the same book of Genesis that we read. Yes. Jesus was. Days of Noah. And then is the days of Lot. Look back and see what they were doing in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. Because it's the same scripture. Yes. Now we notice in the days of Lot, there was a man that had been called out from among the people. And he had a group with him, which represents the church spiritual. And that church spiritual was Abraham's group. Then he had one in there, his nephew, that left him by the name of Lot and went out and lived in Sodom. And the sins of Sodom vexed his soul, only his wife wouldn't permit him to do anything about it. She belonged to all the clubs and things. And there's just so many lots sets around these days. He knows that the thing's wrong, but the woman church they belong to, if he'd say anything about it, would take away his car. So that's a meal ticket. So let me find out at this. Now wait. Abraham was looking for a promised son. Is that right? A spiritual Amen. promised son. Now, and Lot was down, done, forgot about the son. He was just down living with his wife, his kids, and all down. Sodom, he had become the mayor of the city, and he was a great fellow. His wife belonged to all the clubs. And they were getting along pretty good. And then, notice that setting now. Now, just give me just a minute or two longer, your attention, closely. What's the setting? The world has never set in that position since, like it is now. Yes. That's perfect setting. Look here. The called out group. Now, there were three angels come to Abraham. And two of them went out in Sodom. One of them stayed with Abraham. And the one that stayed with Abraham, them two went down in Sodom and preached yes. repentance. Amen. And get out of here. Get out of it, he said. But the one that stayed with Abraham, watch how he identified himself to Abraham. Now remember, Abraham was Abram a day or two before that. And Sarah was, was not Sarah. Now he's A-B-R-A-H-A-M. A-B-R-A-H-A, seven letters. And she's S-A-R-R-A-H, five grace. See? Not S-A-R-R-A, but S-A-R-A-H. See, Sarah. And watch this one sitting here now, eating the calf, drinking milk from the cow and the butter, and eating corn cakes. Sitting there eating, talking to Abraham, and he said, Abraham. How do you know his name was Abraham? The Word. He was the Word. Yes. No. Abraham, where is your wife, Sarah? Women them days didn't act like they do now, you know. Had to be in the husband's business and everything, you know. They yes. Yes. So they... So she was, he said, she's in the tent behind you. And he said, I, now that's a personal pronoun, now, I am going to visit you according to the promise. It was made 25 years before that. She's 90 and he's 100. Amen. There he is, his bald head shining, his white whiskers hanging out, her little old grandma with a little cane in her hand back there in the back, a little shawl over her shoulder. I'm going to visit you and you're going to have that promised child. Watch. And Sarah laughed at it. She said, how could these things be? I'm old. And my Lord, her husband, is old too. You see what I mean? Family relation. Hadn't been for years and years and years. Well, she was 90 years old. And he was 100. Her womb was dead. His life stream was dried up and gone. There's no more desire. Said, me, like a young woman, have pleasure with my husband, him old too. Well, she laughed. And the angel, or the messenger, the man, with his back turned to the tent, said, Why did Sarah say that? Yes. Amen. See? What was it? Now watch. And then, after the sacrifice was made, he vanished. Now remember, Abraham called that man Elohim. How many readers know that? You know what? Right? Elohim. That's almighty God in the form of a man. He was the Word. 
Because he could discern the thoughts. See? Right. God in flesh. What does it testify? That in the last days, Jesus said, just before when the Son of Man is being revealed to his promised church, the church is not down there in Babylon. We got a Babylon church, you know that, the denominations. They're in Babylon. And we got a, a Billy Graham and an Oral Roberts and them out there banging away at them, too. And remember, any of you historians, there has never been a man in all the history of the church ages that has ever went out into Babylon out there preaching in his name ending with H-A-M. Till now, yeah. Billy, G-R-A-H-A-M, which is six, not seven. There... Watch the messenger out yonder preaching repentance and blinding their eyes by the gospel. And there was one to the called out elected church that was showing the sign that God was in flesh. Jesus was God in flesh. Amen. And if Jesus is in you tonight, it's still God manifesting himself in the last days, the Son of Man revealing himself in his church, the human flesh, Amen. making himself known. You get it? Amen. God, down here in His church, making Himself again the Word, the Son of Man being revealed in the last days as it was in the days of Sodom. Now remember, if God gave the Jews and the Samaritans that sign that He was the Word, the prophet that Moses spoke of, the Gentiles, after they had 4,000 years to look for Him, We've had 2,000 years to look for him. He has to identify himself the same way to us as he did then or he did wrong when he identified himself that time. Yes. God's got to act the same time, same way every time or he acted wrong the first time. If he saved a man upon the basis of his faith, look, God never changes, friends. Amen. When man was lost in the Garden of Eden and he was seeking for mercy... God made a decision how he would save man. Yes. And he saved him by the shed blood of an innocent one. Yes. Is that right? Amen. He's never changed it. Amen. We've built cities, towers. we built denominational educational systems. And it still remains the same. Amen. we got denominations and all kinds of things, but he only saves by the blood. He can't Amen. change it. God ever remains true to his system, his word. Whatever he did the first time, he has to do it again or he acted wrong the first time. Therefore, whatever this word of God promises, that's what it's got to be. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's got to do the same. He's got to act the same. He's got to be the same. As he promised in the last days, he would be in his church. And remember, that was the last sign that the church got before the promised son came. Abraham had seen many signs and wonders, but that was the last one, last visitation before the promised son come. Is that right? Amen. Find out. Now, church, watch as it was in that day. We've had all kinds of signs, healings, miracles, speaking in tongues, prophecies. But remember, we got to have a last sign. Just before, and remember, that was a Gentile world that was burned up. That's what it's going to be this time. Just before the fire, the Son of Man will reveal himself. I'll hear a little while, the world won't see me no more. But yet ye shall see me at the consummation. I'll be with you, even in you, the end of the world. Jesus Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forever. Sirs, we would see Jesus. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we are told in the Scriptures that God raised Him up on the third day. We're told in St. John, the 14th chapter and the 12th verse, Jesus said, He that believeth on me the works that I do shall he do also. Even more than this shall he do, for I go unto my Father. Lord Jesus, the hours are growing dark and dim. The church is lost out in the wilderness, wandering around from the people going from one organization to another, from one denomination to another. Come in your promised word. Come, Lord Jesus, and come into us tonight. 
come into every heart that's here. Come into my heart and my life. And may you identify yourself with our faith in you tonight that you have raised up from the dead. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. May we see you, Lord, in this little group of poor people. As we're all assembled here, we're out here because we're seeking life. What a great thing to know that the resurrection and life is among us. Identifying himself, not by some mystic something, but according to the promised word, as it was in the days of Noah and as the days of Lot, when the Son of Man is being revealed. I pray, Father, that you'll grant it tonight that the people here that's sick and needy and those who are sick in soul, those who are just joined the church and knows nothing about receiving the Holy Spirit, watch it punctuate every word with an amen that's in the Bible. The Bible is a mysterious book to them. They can't understand it. May they receive the interpreter of the word tonight that needs no one to interpret it but him. Make it real to their life. Grant it, Father. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I may be ten minutes off tonight for being long. Forgive me. But we're just going to call a few of the prayer cards up and pray for them. Now, I'm going to ask you one thing. Now, don't don't get up and move around. Will you just sit still? Unless you just is something you, like a little child or something, you have to take it. But if you just sit still just for a few minutes, just and let's see if he will come. If he will come and identify himself tonight, sirs, we would see Jesus, and you can see his life living, right? Doing exactly what he did then. For he'd have to do the same. See, he said, I am the what? Vine. Ye are the what? Branches. Well, now how does the, what kind of a life is in the vine will have to be in the branch? Now look, say here today, you people, don't y'all raise fruit down here? Citrus fruit? What? Plums, all right. You raise, look here. If your vine puts forth and it brings a branch off of that vine, and whatever fruit that's on that vine, if that vine puts forth another branch, it'll be the same thing. I was standing with my friend a couple of years ago out in Arizona, Mr. Sherrod, and he had a citrus tree there. I think it had nine different fruits on it. And it had lemon, grapefruit, tangerine, tangelo, orange. I said, what kind of a tree is that? He said, it's an orange tree. Well, I said, well, how them to get in there? He said, I grafted him. Oh, I said, I see, Brother Sherrod. I said, um, I think Brother Sherrod was with me last time I was here. And uh, so I said, uh, well, Brother Sherrod, now next year, they'll all be oranges and won't be. Oh, no, no, no. Uh -uh. He said, the grapefruit will put forth a grapefruit. The lemon will put forth a lemon. Well, I said, how's that? He said, it's all citrus. Oh, I got it then. I said, that's it. I said, thank you, Lord. See, we graft our organizations into this vine. It'll live by the vine, but it bears that kind of fruit that it is. But if that orange tree ever put forth another limb, it'll bring oranges. Amen. And if that life come from Jesus Christ and they wrote a book of Acts behind that first church, if she puts forth another, and they'll write another book of Acts behind it with the same name because it's got to be the same. We don't have time to get them all. So let's just quickly now, while we just got a few minutes, start from M1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Raise up your hands. You've got, who's got M1? Is it here? Prayer card M1. Are you sure? Oh, M1. You got prayer card number one? Who has the lady there, number one? Come right over here. Is, that, is this where you came? Number one, come over here, lady. Number two, who has prayer card number two? Right here. All right, come right over here, sir. Three, raise up your hand. I watch these people on the stretchers. When their cards are called, you pack them up here because I don't think either one of them can walk from a gentleman there in a wheelchair. All right. One, two, three. Prayer card three. All right. Three, four. Four. Prayer card four. Let, look at your card now right quick. Five. Right there. Get a, Go right here, sir. Six. Prayer card six. Six, seven. It, is, is, these people speak French. Or seven. All right. Eight. Eight. Look, it might be somebody deaf or something. Eight. All right. All right, now you watch, watch the worshipers watch them card there. Eight, nine, nine, uh, ten. You never know where they're at. They're just all mixed up and give out everywhere. Ten, or eleven, eleven, 
You have 11? Prayer card 11? All right, over here. 11. 12? Prayer card 12? This is not a big secret, French. I'm just stating here. If I'm making it, you, you speak French for you. 12, 13, watch, it might be somebody deaf, you see, they can't hear, they're just sitting there holding a card. 13, 14, 14, prayer card, for, 14, 14, look at, some, look at your neighbor, maybe he's holding a card, sitting there deaf, you know, and he can't hear a thing, and with the back bar is that way. 14, now the prayer cards are inexchangeable, and they must be, a person must come get their card, and hold their card. Maybe somebody went out. Well, 15. Well, let's we'll stop. Well, go ahead. You got 15. Go ahead. That's, all right. Now, let's wait right here just a minute, man. See, while we're getting ready. All right. Now, please be real reverent and sit quiet just a moment. Now, all that I have said tonight, how many believe it's a promise of the Scripture? Now, now, is it true is the next thing. Is it true? Well, if it's true, then it's God's word. Then he's obligated to his word. Any promise. Do you believe that? Now, if he will make himself known by the same way that he made himself known to both Jew and Samaritan and said he would do it again in the last days to the Gentile, will you believe? Raise up your hand and say, I will believe. Now, there's... Now, these people here, I, I don't guess there's anybody here that knows me. I, I thought I'd seen somebody here a while ago I knew, but I, I think they're gone, somebody. Everybody's strange. How many out there knows that I know nothing about you? Raise up your hands. Anywhere in the balconies, wherever you are. Sure. Now, look, while they're getting them ready down there, there was a little lady one time, and let's say she didn't have a prayer card. She had something better. She had faith. And she said, I believe the man. If I can just touch the border of his garment... I'll be made well. How many knows that scripture? The woman with the blood. All right. Now, let's watch now. Just another scripture while until they tell me they're ready. This woman didn't have no prayer card, but she had faith. She said with it. She had no scripture for it like you've got tonight. But she didn't have no scripture. But she said, if I can touch his garment, I'll believe the man. I'll be healed. And she slipped through the crowd and touched his garment. Now, did you ever see the Palestinian garment? It swings loose. And it's also got an underneath garment. Now, if you touch my pocket... Of my coat, I never feel it. See, and his garment hung out that far from me. He never felt the physical touch. So he me proved that. Uh, he said, "Who touched me?" And uh, Peter said, "Well, Lord." In other words, you'll make people think you're you're mentally. See, don't 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 say that. See, don't do that. Cause uh, everybody's touched. He said, "But I perceived that I got weak. Virtue went from me. That strength. I got weak." And he looked around to the audience and he found the woman. Told her about her blood issue and said her faith and made her whole. How many knows the story? It's true. Now, our ministers, brethren up here. Now, the Bible said that he's the high priest tonight that can be touched with the feeling of our infirmity. Is that right? Amen. How many out there believe that? He's a high, sitting at the right hand of God tonight, a high priest that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. Then how would he act if you touched him? He'd act the same way he did then. If he's the same yesterday and forever. Is that right? So now, you believe. You pray. You trust. See what God does. See if you can touch his garment. You touch him. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that preacher don't know me. He knows nothing about me, but you do. So, Lord, when I touch you, you speak through him. Now, what is this? A gift is not something that you take like a, a sickle or a, a knife and go through with that knife like a gift cutting. That's not a gift of God. A gift of God is just... A gift of God is know how to relax yourself. Get yourself out of the way so God can come in and use you. It ain't something that you got in your hands you stab around with. You just get yourself out of the way and let the Holy Spirit use you. Uh, uh, isn't that the way you people do when you speak with tongues, you Pentecostals? Just get yourself out of the way. Well, that's the same thing here now. And if He will grant it, will you believe it? Accept it. Know that His presence is here. You won't need no prayer card then. How about the... The judge of heavens and earth. As Abraham called him, judge of heaven and earth. Would you do wrong? See? If he in this last days, according to his promise. Now, through the week, we'll just keep throwing scripture in there, showing you that's the truth. And if he's here with us tonight, so praying that you can see his works and know he's here. As his promised word, not some mythical something, but what his word promised you. 
then you believe it. Now, I don't know. Now, sometimes if the visions come, then I can't tell what I'm seeing. So let the, the microphone, whatever it is, ever who's on it, loud it up. I want you to be real reverent just a moment. Now, is this a, a pet lady? Now, here happens to be a woman. Just what I was talking about, St. John 4. A woman and a man meet for the first time in life. I'm a total stranger, and we're total strangers to one another. That's right, just so you raise your hand at the people see it. We've never met one another in life. There stands a the woman. Here I, just a perfect thing of our, you're not the woman there, and I'm not the Lord. But it, it's two people that meet here. Just in a little place like they met, first time in life. Now, if he is the same yesterday and forever, he'd perhaps talk to you a minute. See, like he did the woman. See? Now, the father, the other day when... Recently, when Brother Borders here was, we had 600 and something invitations in the state here besides overseas. He said, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, there's a group of men down there. I said, go ahead. That's all right. Set up the meeting down there. I felt to do that. Here I am. Now, I don't know what next. I'm his year. That's all I know. Now, here you are, a person I'm preaching the word saying that he is not dead. He's alive. He's alive. And promised to identify himself in our flesh human flesh like he did back there see all that God was he poured into Christ all Christ was poured into the church that's him Christ in us now if the Lord Jesus has raised from the dead and I bring you up here and lay hands on you and maybe like some of our evangelist brethren which is just exactly right and lay hands on you and say your infirmity has gone Lord has healed you that be all right. You can go. That's okay. I certainly endorse that 100%. That's what the Bible said. But now what if he stands here and tells you something that you have done or something that you ought not have done? If he knows what you have been and tells you what you have been and you know whether it's true or not, then if he tells you what the future is going to be, if that's right, this is going to be right too. Is that right? That makes it him. You see. Now I'm just saying that to contact your spirit. See, just like he did the woman to, well, bring me a drink. Now, there's one thing I want you to notice. Watch the woman. Watch the expression change on her face just now. See? She's conscious that something's going on. How many of you have seen a picture of that light? That's right on the woman there. See? 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 See it there? It's kind of an amber light. Now, her trouble is this. Now, if I could heal you, I'd do it. But I can't. I can't heal you. God's the healer. You're faith in God. You're extremely nervous. You're suffering with a nervous condition. And then you've got something wrong with your throat. You can hardly talk. Just above a whisper. It's a thyroid gland. That's right. Now, you believe? Yeah. Now, just a moment. So if they wouldn't think I was guessing it, just a minute. I I say so if people wouldn't think you're a nice person. I got a good contact with the Holy Spirit with you. So... uh, Yes, you've been advised to be operated on, but you turned it down. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. You're expecting God, yes, sir. Another thing, you have an asthmatic condition that bothers you. That's true, isn't it? Now, you see something here knows you. Isn't that right? Do you believe it's him? Then believe it and go off the platform and get well. And believe it with all your heart. Uh, you believe now with all your heart? If thou canst believe How do you do, sir? I'm a stranger to you, I suppose. That we, you, you met me when I was here before at Baton Rouge. My, that's been quite a while ago, hasn't it? I guess it's been 12 years or more, maybe longer, and maybe 14 years. Well, I wouldn't know what, nothing about you no more than you was in the meeting or something. But God does know you. And... Um, You see where it goes, you see the other people. Right? It's annoying. Now, if the Lord Jesus will... Here, we are... I, I believe the last person was a, a woman. Right? Now, it's just like a, a dream. You see, you dream. Now, now, you are a man. And now when Jesus met a man, it was Simon Peter, when he identified himself. His name was Simon then. He called him... Peter said his name would be after that it'd be called Peter. <clears throat> if the Lord Jesus will tell me what your trouble is, will you believe me to be his servant and believe it his present? 
Will every man in here breathe the same breath? Perhaps you're known here because you're from the city. I see something like you're excited about something. That's Yes, it is, because it's a blood. Something wrong with blood. You're bleeding in the bowels. That's exactly right. That's ulcerates in there, too. See? Now, that's true, isn't it? Now, you believe? That's the way our Lord would have done it. Wouldn't it? That's Him doing it, don't you believe? What if Jesus told Simon what his name was? What if God would tell me what your name is? Would you believe me? Arthur? Lewis Carey. That's exactly right. Go on your own. Have faith in God. You believe? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm a stranger to you, sister. I don't know you. I've never seen you in my life. You're just a woman standing there. Younger than me, born miles apart, years apart. But he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that? Do you believe it? That, now, you know standing by the side of a man, your brother here, would make you feel like that. You know there's got to be something else in that present. Real sweet, humble, meek. Isn't that right? If that's right, so the audience know, just raise up your hand so you see. See, I'm looking right at her, that light circling right around her. The lady is standing here for somebody else. She isn't here for herself. It's for a daughter. That's right. You believe the Lord can tell me what's... You're planning on bringing that girl to the meeting. But you, you believe God can tell me what's her matter? Will you believe and put that handkerchief on her and believe that she'll get help? It's in her back. That's right. That's exactly. Go believe now. Put that on her and she'll get wet. You believe with all your heart? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to man that believe. How do you do we are strangers to each other, I suppose. I don't know you, you don't know me, but the Lord knows both of us. So, being man and woman, meeting for the first time. Now, our Lord said that one thing to that woman, and the whole city believed. They didn't, he didn't do it no more. He just did it one time, and all the city believed. Now, don't, don't be afraid. There's nothing going to bother you. It's going to help you, see, because I don't think you're a critic. <laughs> Or you, that vibration of what the Spirit of the Lord put me coming in like that. You're a believer. So you have no reason to be alarmed about anything. You're um, suffering from a, a rupture. That is exactly right. And you believe that the uh, Lord Jesus will heal you of that? What if I tell you something else is wrong with you? Would it make you strong to believe? you got a knot. If I can tell you it's not on your cheek, it's on your back. <laughs> That's right, wait. All right. Now I believe you. Go believe me. You believe now, every one of you, with all your heart? Now that ought to make everybody realize you're in the presence of God. Sir, do you believe God can heal that arthritis and make you well? If you do, just keep walking, saying, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, come this way, lady. I see you trying to get up out of a bed, too, real slow. Arthritis also. If you'll believe with all your heart, God will make you well. You believe it? All right, just keep walking, saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I certainly believe with all my heart. Come, sir. Amen. A condition of nervousness and stuff and prostrate and arthritis also. And lay that up on her. Believe with all your heart. Get well also. I just keep on walking. Believe in God. Amen. It'll be all right. You just can believe. All right. Come this way, lady. Do you believe me to be his servant? You do. You believe God can heal that heart trouble you got? But just keep walking, saying, thank you, Lord. I thank you for healing. my heart. All right, come, sir. Do you believe what you see to be the truth? What if I told you that stomach trouble is healed down there and you go eat your supper? Would you believe it? Heart, go on, eat your supper. You must. You're shattered. Cancer, you believe it? God will make you well and heal you? Heart, just keep walking. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe it. Amen. Also a nervous heart. Do you believe that God will heal it and make it well? Just keep walking. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Believe it. All your heart. Come this way, lady. Look on here. Oh, your main thing, you got several things wrong with you. A lady's trouble, but your main thing is a heart trouble that's bothering you real bad. you believe that God will heal it and make you well? Just keep going on saying, thank you, Lord Jesus. I believe with all my heart. Come, sir. You got two or three things wrong with you, complications, but your main thing you want me to pray for or ask about is that arthritis you have. Look at the arthritis. Just keep moving, believing, and you'll never have to take that stick. Amen. Believe with all your heart. You got stomach trouble. It's caused had you for a long time some nervous condition, making it ulcerated stomach. You drink anything, it's it's kind of like coffee or something. It gets sour in your mouth and things like that. Go believe now; it won't bother you no more. Jesus Christ will make you well. Come later. You believe in Jesus Christ? Just a minute. Just a minute. 
You believe God heals that sinus sitting there and make you well from the sinus? You believe it with all your heart? The lady sitting there checking, looking, dress on. You believe that God will heal you and make you well of it? You had more faith than you thought you had. So, all right, it's over now. You believe it. What do you think? You believe that God will heal you and make you well of that nervous condition sitting there, that man? You do. You believe it. Now, who'd you touch? You never touched me. You touched him. That's what I did. Amen. You fell over in your lap and you've having eye trouble. Your eyes are getting so bad you can't hardly get around. You believe that God will make you well? Believe it. You can have it. Amen. I challenge you to believe it. Thank you, Jesus. Trouble, stomach troubles just left you. You believe it? I go on your road and rejoice and say, Thank you, Lord. Be made well. Hallelujah. This little lady sitting right here with a green looking dress on. You're trying to touch something. You're praying. You believe God can tell me what you're praying about? Get rid of that gallbladder trouble and you think it'd be all right. Lady kind of heavy set there with a dress on. Big. You believe that God will heal you of the gallbladder trouble if you do believe? God will grant it to you and you can go and be made well. Amen. You have to believe it. You can only do it as you believe. How many of you wants to believe with all your heart? Now, sirs, we would see Jesus. He is raised from the dead. He's alive today. He's here in his church, showing that his coming is drawing nigh. The world is going to be burned like it was in the days of Sodom. The atoms is already gathered together and loads and things to set her afire. And, but before that happens, the promised son will arrive yes. in person. Jesus Christ to take home his church. Amen. Do you believe that with all your heart? Do you believe that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever? How many believes now that his presence is here? And you believe that he made this statement. These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Raise up your hand. Now, lay your hands on one another. Where the sick people is, lay your hands. You, I'm, lay, I'm afraid they'll make you close. Lay, put your hands. Now, you pray for each other. Don't pray for yourself. Pray for the one you got your hands on. Now, he's here to heal each one of you. Believe it. Heavenly Father, we believe now with all our heart that in the presence of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that the devil has lost his power, his influence, and Jesus Christ lives now. Come out, Satan. May these people be made well for the kingdom of God.